Hey friends, welcome back to Pretend World's Real People. As always, I'm Tyler, and I believe I am COVID-free now. My voice feels normal. I feel normal. Feel still a little bit tired, but I heard that is normal after you, you know, go through COVID. But it seems like everything is great. Still playing it cautiously. Luckily, I don't have to work all weekend. Uh, it's just been really nice to kind of, outside of being sick, just lay low for a week and not, uh, not have to go and serve beer to people. So that has been a blessing. But that is not why you're here. You're here because today, July 1st, what, what, what day is it? I'm going to let you yell it in your car. What day is it? It is Stranger Things 4 Volume 2. That's what day it is. It's finally out. We get some more answers, hopefully, to all the questions we had during the midseason finale. I am looking forward to more of the gang. Hopefully, everybody gets together. I want to see more Eddie Munson, and I want to see more Vecna. I'm just, I'm, I'm super excited. I'm a huge nerd. Luckily, the guest I have today feels the same way because she was a fan of the show before she was cast. Today's guest is Regina Ting Chen. She plays Miss Kelly, the guidance counselor uh, for Hawkins High School, and she is one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. We, <laughs> I, I don't believe I had to edit anything in this episode uh, because we would just go off on, on tangents. She has a wonderfully wild imagination and she is just an immensely creative person. We go into her sheltered upbringing, growing up with mainly, you know, Chinese soap operas, and then getting into sci-fi, her love for Doctor Who, joining Stranger Things, the fact that, you know, she grew to being this, like, badass kickboxing instructor as well. I told her I would take one of her classes when I go to Atlanta, hopefully later this year. <sighs> I'm, I'm going to dread it. I love working out. I absolutely love it, but uh, humidity sucks. So, uh, Regina, <laughs> I know you're going to encourage me. I'm going to muscle through it. I'm still not looking forward to a humid workout in Atlanta, Georgia. Georgia. Oh, my God, I can't even talk in late summer. So, I'm, I'm rambling. The coffee has fully kicked in. Let's just get right down to it. Let's descend or ascend into the Upside Down with Miss Regina Ting Chen. Regina Ting Chen, and I am an actor. I'm also a kickboxing coach and an avid tennis player and a sci-fi nerd and INFJ. Do you want me to keep going? <laughs> just, keep, just keep listing it all off. You had me like, at, at obviously kickboxing, but what, what t tennis? <laughs> where, where did that come from? I'm really new into tennis. I'm kind of an adrenaline, adrenaline junkie. So <laughs> anything that gets my heart beating fast, but, you know, kind of, but fitness related, not like drug induced. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be clear that it's all organic, natural. She's hiding the uh, the spoon as we speak, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> but no, tennis, because tennis, it's weird because someone actually, I think a coach of mine uh, compared it to acting. It's when you can mm -hmm. learn the techniques and practice all you want. But when it comes to go time, when someone hits a ball at you, you never know what that's going to be. So you never know what someone's going to give you, right? Even in the world of yeah. acting, it correlates. And when it comes at you, all you can do is react and give back whatever your body feels is the appropriate reaction for the ball that's coming at you. So it's like really cool to compare that. I'm not thinking about acting when I'm hitting balls, of course. But, you know, I'm in that mindset of like, you just got to trust yourself in your training and react you know be in the moment it's so crazy right wow. that was so epic that was so epic <laughs> i feel like you rehearsed that a little bit i'm gonna throw in this tennis it. thing just so i can go <laughs> into this room <laughs> thank you so much i did not rehearse that that just came out of me right now <laughs> but yeah i was like i was very impressed with myself for a second i'm not yeah. that coordinated normally <laughs> it was so fluid <laughs> oh thanks <laughs> Well, I need I need to ask that. Like, what came first, the fitness portion of your life or acting? Uh, definitely acting. Um, growing up, I was not allowed to do any sports because my family believed in, like, if you broke your bones, then you can't walk or do anything. And of course, it's workbooks every school year and summer, no activities. And I was terrible at school. Like, I'm one of those kids who tried. 
Okay, it's really sad when you try and you just still can't do it. But sometimes I feel like the school system makes you think if you can't pass or get a high grade that you're not smart or you're not capable. And that is so untrue because there's just so many different types of people in the world. And I stumbled my way through, you know, school and college. I don't know how I passed, how I got my bachelor's degree. And I got it in Spanish, no less. <laughs> I know, I know. It's real, nothing makes sense in my life. Because I grew up in Texas and oh. well, I was born in Hawaii and then I moved to Texas when I was eight and you know, there's a big Mexican population there. And so I'm around a lot of people, a lot of Tex-Mex Spanish. And I just loved the language. I loved learning how to communicate with people and their culture. It was always very fascinating to me. Um, I will tell you the best Spanish lessons are working at a restaurant and not class. <laughs> <laughs> Like you can read all you can, like literature and, you know, conjugations and stuff, but it's until you apply it with everyday people, there's no way you can truly learn it fully, I think, for me. So anyway, school came first and I mean, what were you asking? I can't, or the acting or the fitness. So, um, <laughs> and then I kind of felt it. I've always been very, like I loved performing um, to my family. So we, you know, everything was workbooks and whatnot. So I put on talent shows at home for my whole family they didn't want to be there but you know we're kids so they had to and I would use science fair boards to be like the curtains and I'd recruit my sisters and they would so willingly want to perform with me <laughs> no they hated it they didn't come to rehearsal or anything it's totally fine it's totally fine I don't still hold a grudge after so many years um but yeah we would I would put on plays for like Father's Day Mother's Day Christmas and we would you know, act out scenes that from the Chinese soap operas that I love watching with my grandma. Um, and so I always kind of had that, the acting in me, I think. I just didn't know what it was, hmm. especially because I wasn't allowed to go into drama or anything like that. It was always math and science, all that stuff. So yeah. And then when I went to college, I finally, long story short, is someone was like, you should try modeling. I was a lot skinnier then. I'm tall. I'm tall for a Chinese woman, but like, I was a lot skinnier then. They were like, hey, you should try modeling. Then I got an agent. And they were like, here, take acting classes. I'm like, acting classes, what? And <laughs> I started studying Meisner, which is behavioral reading. And it, it, the rest is history. Like, I fell in love. And there's so many more stories to that. But that's the short version of it. And then fitness came later when one of my acting coaches was like, Regina, you don't understand your body at all. Like, you don't know how far your arm is from your like the center of your body you just don't understand movement and I think it would be good for you to take a class salsa dancing or kickboxing to understand how your body moves and he was right because I just didn't like I, I smack into things all the time I don't know how I look I don't know how to how I move I don't have an understanding of like physicality mm. um because and I'm so awkward and uncoordinated so it didn't help so I was like, do I want to do salsa dancing or kickboxing? And, you know, being Chinese, I was like, I must honor the inner, you know, fire in my soul that somehow <laughs> I have just because I'm Chinese. And I was terrible, but I, I loved it. I just, I was so embarrassing. Like, looking back, I don't know. I'm a kickboxing coach now. I started yeah. five years ago. Yeah. I went from being, a, like, not understanding anything being so uncoordinated but I would put in the work day after day after day I mean it wasn't easy but I just loved it so much so it's kind of like acting right like you really have to have a love for it otherwise you can't you know maintain it for the long haul and it, it's always just so surprising every time I punch something, <laughs> kick something. it's like <laughs> it's uh there's some beauty in the movement and I finally started understanding how I moved understanding how my body is and and then inspiring other people to become fit because I you know I used to be really skinny do the modeling stuff and then I went through waves and being someone who didn't grow up with exercise it was like I didn't know what to do you're just not exposed to that and nowadays I feel like with Instagram and everything I'm talking so much I'm sorry that's what this is for no no keep going, keep going. okay uh and um, <laughs> Instagram and all the Pinterest, everything, I think like fitness things are accessible health, you know, understanding health in your body. They're just so more accessible now. So 
it's easier for people to be like, oh, I want to try this or this might be good for me. You know, but back then it's like, yeah, I was around before Instagram came around. So <laughs> I just didn't know. And I didn't have friends who really enjoyed fitness much. So I just wasn't exposed to that. But when I, when you find your community of people that have similar interests as you, you just lift each other up naturally. And you, you know, now I just yell at people to do better. <laughs> In a, in a loving, friendly way. I'm like, come on, you've got this. Don't give up on me now. Don't give up on yourself. I'm spiking the mic. <laughs> it's like it's like I'm fighting like an Avengers war every time I kickbox. Like, yeah, so epic. <laughs> it's, well, I, quick background about me. I also, we worked as a personal trainer all throughout college and afterwards with like group fitness and boxing was the best so I completely understand like I would I think I created a uh, Captain America Civil War style workout where people were That's like boxing amazing. and working out it, yeah they were dead by the end of it but I completely agree with the whole like hey hey I know I know you're really tired right now um here's five more pounds you got this like you yeah. you got this or hey just hit harder breathe da, 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 da. there's there's like a euphoric thing that just goes around the room when you're coaching these people and I, I'm curious because I have my own relationship with it. I grew up very overweight. So when I lost that weight, a whole new like level of confidence when I understood my physicality. Did you yep. get a whole new wave as well with, with your like sort of new knowledge of how your body moves? Yeah. I mean, I also grew up a chubby kid. I mean, rice, too much rice, everyday rice. Oh my God. <laughs> rice and no exercise. And you know, it's Chinese grandma. It's like, more, eat more. You know, oh yeah. Mad if you don't eat it. <laughs> but then I, then I, got super skinny because I had just discovered running a little bit but I, I don't think I was doing it right and I overran because I'm an adrenaline junkie so I just like things that get my heart rate going and I was too skinny and then now finding that understanding of being healthy fit and not like stop trying to be super thin or too much of anything just let your body body naturally form the way it should if you have a good routine, right? I mean, as a personal trainer, you probably really believe in that because you put in the work, but everybody, everybody's body shows, uh, progresses differently. Yeah, we're no, all completely Nobody different. is the same. Yeah, which is so cool and fascinating to me. Yeah. But yeah, I felt the newfound uh, confidence, you know, um, with my physicality and also, God, the confidence goes so far though. It's like the confidence in being myself because I'm a I can't I don't have the energy to hide who I am when I coach so it all comes out like all of it and people they don't leave they keep coming back for more and I'm like wow I thought I was this like scary intense person but sometimes you know when you doubt yourself you never know what someone else might need it, you might be exactly what they need so at 6 30 a.m Monday Wednesday Friday I am what these my warriors need to be like let's go And, and, and the confidence is that, and then in thinking that I can protect myself and my loved ones, that's a big one. Just feeling, not walking, walking the earth, being afraid, you know, I mean, it might be dumb in some way. Cause I know I would, I might get my butt kicked, but confidence is half the battle. Like I think if you're scared to start with, it doesn't matter how good of a fighter you are. Yeah. You're already on the losing side. So if you're mentally, spiritually there, you just have to apply all that hard work and training you have, and it'll just execute this beautiful, glorious thing. At least that's how I think. Oh, I totally agree. There's a, there's a perfect balance between being humble and being confident and having that carry yes. you through instead yes. of being like overly cocky. Yeah. And then you have a bloody oh, yeah. nose and you're like, oh, I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Some of the coaches, like we all, we all get along. They're like, Regina, do you want to, you want to spar? I'm like, no, I, I already know. I'm, I'm totally fine. I don't want to get swept. It's I, I, I don't want to get a hook to my head and be dizzy. I know. Oh, <laughs> come, no. come to, and then I, I'll challenge them. I'll be like, you're good at sparring, but I have a hard cardio class. So come take my class and then I'll get in the ring with you. Just kidding. I won't. But <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, definitely a, a, a confidence on all levels for myself, my body, and just bringing other people together. How do you feel about carrying that same level of confidence in the audition room? Are you a nervous auditioner? Are you kind of passive? Well, it could be either way. I'm, I, I run very instinctually. So even if it's like nerves or 
it's like when it's go time, I just take one deep breath and then black out. <laughs> and just, ho- <laughs> I just hope that like, not hope. Cause I, you know, I do the work with the character or the scene, whether it's like a heavy relationship or it's just like a one-off co-star. It's like when you do the prep work, all you can do is just trust that you've done enough and go for it. And I just trust my instincts because I am very like on the fly. Like even talking to you, I don't want to prep too much. Like I know my stuff, but I can't, I don't want to overthink anything. I'll just execute. However, kind of like the tennis ball. I'm telling you, <laughs> it comes at you. You just, yeah, you're just reacting because you never know how it's going to come at you. Yeah. So why over prepare? That's like too much work. I work hard <laughs> and efficiently, but I don't want to waste energy because I need to save it for kickboxing. <laughs> <laughs> no, but did yeah. that like has that changed from when you first started acting? Because going into an audition room when you first start is like it's so surreal and weird, and some people have different reactions to it. Or have you always been that instinctive on the fly? Like, no, all right, like, oh I got this. no, oh my god, a nervous wreck. I'm still a nervous wreck all the time. Oh no, but you, yeah, you know, I used to go in the room, so I did a lot of commercials in Texas because I grew up part of the time there and I'm I'm been I've been in Atlanta for four years so but Atlanta is all self-tape so that's interesting because that's a different feel you know you have to you really have to trust yourself and who your reader is and if you get a coach like because you're you don't you're not in the room for someone to tell you to give you you know notes or feedback um but before I would prep and prep and prep and then I don't know I black out a lot I just I don't know why (laughs) I just I just when I mean blackout I mean like I just am there and then I forget the overthinking part um which can be good and bad I don't know (laughs) I mean obviously it's working right it is it is I don't know (laughs) if it's good advice but it's working so far um but definitely over the years it's like less overthinking is just so much better um, of course, keeping up with your training, you know, and I'm always in some way studying people. Uh, I just started writing, which is so hard. Writing is so hard. How do people connect the dots? Like, I can't, I like, I write, I start writing like a short scene in the beginning. It's like, you know, happiness and flowers. And then there's a war at the end. And I don't even know how I got there. But I just, I just started writing it for the past few months and I'm just so impressed by writers. Like that's a whole, I don't know if you've ever written or I, write yourself. Yeah. I'm a screenwriter as well. And it, that's it does amazing. not get easier at all. Really? I guess I mean, it's it, kind of. It, it, it's so hard to describe because that, that, um, that sort of flow state you go into where you just start writing and then like there's a war at the end, like just random stuff. That happens all the time, but then you have the opportunity to revise it, rewrite it. And it's that. So that's so how, how did that come about for you? Was it something you always were kind of curious about or you just kind of fell into? Um, I daydream a lot. <laughs> um, like I just walk around and, you know, I could be at my day job. I, I work from home and I'll sit in here and I'll, my mind will suddenly think a villain is going to smash through the window. And I'm gonna have to kick butt. I'm always like, "Well, you're awesome." <laughs> it's always some, no. It's like I, I'm, and then like, or do you ever do this? Because I've met some people who do this. When you go on long drives, do you sometimes imagine yourself like running next to your car and you're like swinging around the light poles, jumping over the railings? I know it sounds crazy, but I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if it's just my way of like tolerating the drive. But my imagination's always like thinking of something here and there and everywhere. And I, I decided, I was like, what can I do with all this daydreaming? It's so dumb. Like, why am I just thinking of random scenarios all the time? And I was like, oh, I could write it out. You know, I'm thinking about, you know, I'm, I'm always looking at my hands. I'm like, is the force there? Am I going to, I'm going to be able to move things with my mind, you know, and, and it sucks because it's not going to happen. Yeah, right? It's not real. But when I write, it makes it real in the moment. You know, it's so special. And I never knew that. Because, you know, in acting, you, you're always waiting for someone to give you a scene. You're waiting, you know, or you're in class. Someone's giving you a scene to work on to find one. 
So when you produce the ideas yourself, I mean, you can probably attest to this, like it's some, it's another world. It's yeah. magic. And you're like, how did I come up with that? Am I crazy? Do I need help? <laughs> <laughs> I, I will completely agree with that, with that entirety of everything you just said, because it's, I mean, at that point, it's built in your body that obviously you, <laughs> you need to write. Uh, I, <laughs> I have no idea how to compare it. I'll just start chuckling and my girlfriend will say, what, what did you come up with this time? Like we're sitting yeah. in a restaurant and I just start laughing. What, what, oh, nothing, just ninjas, you know, like that'd be really cool if ninjas, just random stuff. But I completely agree. And it just, it's that, that extra sort of creative flow that I, I've met a lot of, you know, performers and arts workers have where you need to not only like act or write but do other stuff too and yeah. writing I mean even if it's just a short scene that's the, you're emitting all that creativity so that's so good and I <laughs> I have to ask you this do you ever walk through the automatic doors and do like the Jedi wave <gasps> or... <laughs> no but I'm so gonna do that now <laughs> you have to you can do it very you uh, just over the top blew my mind <laughs> like i'm gonna go to the grocery i don't i need to where is it like a, a grocery store would have that right oh yeah yeah i'm just gonna stand there and start doing like <laughs> oh it's amazing the looks you get are fantastic but you can go from like really grandiose more obi-wan like hello there and and move yeah. things. <gasps> or you can yeah. just do the subtle like flick of your finger when you're walking oh. and you feel so rejuvenated walking into the oh store my God. i can't believe i'm telling listeners this but uh yeah it's it is one of the coolest things you can do for yourself just as a like fun little imaginary aside you know i'm telling you <laughs> like thank you for telling me this because how i'm so excited <laughs> I, i'm so excited and i just like i i don't know i have Kali sticks i tried to learn Kali. i don't know it's like a it's a type of it's a, like a stick martial art. Is that I, the the short stick with the the blade that goes through, or it's just oh the, my the god short baton? <laughs> I don't know what that one's called, but these ones are longer, and they just uh, I think it's a Filipino style. I'm not exactly sure, so don't quote me on that. But okay. <laughs> I'll pretend it's a lightsaber, boom, boom, and I'll yes. just walk around my yard with my dog, looking like that crazy. <laughs> But I'm so excited because I think that's what it's all in our imagination. And when we get to, for us, it's so real in the moment and it's so rewarding. I'm so excited to do this sliding door thing. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you. Oh my God. My I'm dogs are never named done it. Chewy. I know my dogs are named Chewy and Leia. So I am a huge Star Wars fan. Like, like it's, oh my, oh God. my God. I'm so excited, Tyler. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to like hit leave on this meeting and go do that. <laughs> just walk through. Just just send me an Instagram story of you just standing in front of Target going. Zroom, yeah, zroom. That, oh, Target got to add it to my list. That's cool. I don't know if I'd like the long one or the short one. I don't know. Yeah, it just, it's, it's, <laughs> for me, it's 30 years of, of geekdom of, you know, growing up with comics, Love watching it. the X-Men and watching Star Wars. But maybe, <laughs> like, maybe that's I, possible. <laughs> we have, but without that hope, even yeah. though, you know, we have to fight the realistic side of our brains and we have that creative and we're like, it could. And just with a little ounce of that, you can go so far with your imagination. Yeah. Um, I will also say I'm generally a pretty peppy, happy person, if you can't tell. Um, <laughs> but that also fall. means <laughs> that also means that and I know this about myself, I stuff my grief or anger deep, deep down. So I do write a lot of like scenes that involve elements of grief in some way and that's my outlet I never knew that could be my outlet of course my other outlet is kickboxing but I'm so focused on fighting a war there it's it's different you know I don't have time for grief I'm fighting aliens and I'm like this the stormtroopers are coming come on guys and nobody cares like no one they're like there goes Regina she's been watching Clone Wars again <laughs> like I'll just be Anakin for now when he was good he was so and I, I'm gonna be Ahsoka because I wish there was an Anakin there that I could just follow around you know oh <laughs> like, my god I, love it. I know and then like for a while I was uh watching um gosh Aang the cartoon Aang oh, uh, uh, uh Last uh, Airbender 
Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, for a while I was like, like, you know, roundhouse kicks would be fire bending and like squat would be earth bending. So I'd call it out like, okay, you guys, earth bending. And she would be like, oh my God, she's watching, you know, glass <laughs> air bending. <laughs> I want to really take fun. your class so bad. I want you. I want you have good energy. I want you to take my class because you will. You'll first of all, you'll burn so many calories and you'll have so much fun. Um, like I make my people. I call them warriors. They're all my warriors. Oh, also, 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 everybody has a nickname. You come in with your warrior persona. Yeah, and you get to pick it. Like I don't just choose a random one. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, like one guy, he's like real stocky, kind of like earthbent, like so. I call him Atlas because he's really kind, but he like, he's strong and he's always holding, like, I know him, I know everyone. So he's always holding the weight of his family. So I'm like, you're like Atlas. And he's like, I love that. So like when we're doing a cardio thing for strong Atlas, that's hard for him because he's more strength, you know, and cardio is not his friend. <laughs> but I'm like, come on, Atlas. And when I call that nickname, it's like, it lights them up because it, you, you know, even though they're just everyday people, they're not actors, they you're still human and you still find things you can resonate with. And then they're just, he like books it. Oh my God. I wish you could see it. He's like, he, got, he almost does. I don't watch a lot of anime, but you know how anime people, they run with their hands <laughs> like this. He does that when he sprints. And I'm like, this is amazing. I also <laughs> tell everyone, get out of the way. Cause he can't stop. Like once he goes, he can't stop. But yeah, everyone has a nickname and gosh, I keep going back to the kickboxing thing and I forget what the original question was. No, no, it's, it, it, but that's the fun part of this podcast is it just starts um, like twisting to all these different branches in the best yeah, way. I mean, it is. you're talking about your, your clients in kickboxing and giving them their, their nicknames and they're, they're warriors. warriors. You're warriors. Not Sorry. Clients. You're warriors. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Warriors. Cause you're, we, uh, oh. <laughs> oh my god do you do voiceover work you're so good i i've dabbled and i'm trying to get more into it but it's good i hope you do that was great it's okay. tough in right, sorry. I digress. uh no no no, no. I, oh I was, yeah i was just thinking you know with, with your warriors you're giving them these nicknames and you're inspiring yeah. them and you're putting their imagination on on blast yeah it almost seems like it's the same reaction you have when you're auditioning where i'm sure they feel like they black out too where they're just on such of a like like a creative high like they just something about it it, it just seems so so comparable I, sorry i just i had to say that it just it no, seems like i'm that telling you it's it. all connected like the tennis <laughs> thing and now the warrior thing it's all connected it's just yeah. it's, at the end of the day it's it's being a human right so the beauty yeah. of acting is once you get past like the technique the lines yeah. the story it's just in the moment just be a, a human being yeah. and but you're right and then like when you have a coach that an acting coach so similar to kickboxing like someone's there to root you know root for you and and when you're down for the count and you don't think you can believe in yourself you have someone who will lie to your face and say you can and you'll just surprise yourself and therefore surprising the coach it, like i i don't ever know if someone can do more but if they don't try how are they ever going to find out you know and if you can't do more that's okay Take a break, breathe, then get up and do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like don't, I'm, I'm always like shouting uh, epic things that I just come up with on the fly. I remember there was one drill we did and this lady, I was like, you got to do, you got to bear crawl across the mat and then uh, do frog hops. You know what this is? Oh. Like, like hop, I know, I know. I'm already hurting. Explosive. <laughs> I know. Frog hops. Right. And she goes. Uh, can we do something else is there something else we could do and I was just like I don't know I was in one of my epic moods and I don't I think I said no because sometimes in life we're only dealt these cards so all you can do is make it work for you and do your best and I was like everyone was like oh my god and I just came up with that like <laughs> and she was like okay fine and then she did it and she 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 finished you know but it's so true because this is how my, your face, this is how my <laughs> brain thinks. I'm always like motivated because I, I want, because we, I know I can slip into a dark space. So the only way for me to pull myself out of it is to constantly have these positive thoughts. And 
And now with the, my warriors, I get to say them out loud and, and they'll sometimes be like, what would Regina do? You know, it's so silly, but if they can't get through something like Re Regina would just yell at me and tell me to keep going and then they'll yeah. keep going, you know, but it's because the world is getting darker and darker, I swear, you know, and, and to get through it, you really have to train yourself to think in that positive mindset. It's, it's an mm -hmm. active thing. I think, don't you think like, Oh yeah. You don't just magically think positive. It's, it's, it's a practice. It's a discipline every single day. Yeah. And, it, and there are going to be hard days. It's not always easy. But then I, I think if you just yell it out, if you say it out loud, something about that. It's like when people are sad, there's this like test you could do. Like if you're sad and you smile, you actually like can't, your sadness lightens because the smile forces you to get out of that. I don't know, something about the muscles yeah. and the nerves. So I think it's kind of like that. If, you, if you're feeling down, you have to say it out loud. Like, I can do this and punch the ground and get back up and do it again. Same thing with acting. Like, I mean, it's rejection after rejection, right? And rejection, you don't hear back. But that's the same. It depends on how <laughs> you look at it. <laughs> Ghosting, whatever you want to call it. I also am kind of like a goldfish. I forget things all the time. So every day is a new day. <laughs> So I just carry along, you know, I don't know if it's an active choice. I probably should go back to therapy and figure that out. But I don't know if I actively forget things, but it's my way to keep carrying on, mm. you know, but I, I forget like the, it's not that I forget dark moments. It's, it's learning to not let it control me. Like I get to tell it when to come out. It doesn't get to dictate you know, how I feel or how I'll operate my day. And again, I'm only human. Sometimes you can't control that, yeah. but you have to have your tools in your back pocket. Be like, okay, I, I can do this. Okay. I have tomorrow. You know, I'm going to do this tomorrow. Like be kind to yourself, but then do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it uh, better. Let's, let's do it again. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is that, I mean, this kind of goes without saying, but it seems like it's pretty normal for a lot of actors, but does it feel cathartic to you to perform like a, a heavy grief scene or a heavy dramatic scene when you were having those times where you can just kind of let everything out without this sort of I feel like there's an internal judgment people get you know when when they're unable to really vocalize how they feel or uh, just even the notion of crying you know it, it's kind of hard for some people so do you feel like acting itself helps you sort of free that and and lessen that space a little bit yeah absolutely it just especially when you're honestly tapping in into those feelings um but also having the understanding this is pretend right because that's i mean i used to dive in too hard and then i think one teacher told me you have to i was i would cry in the scene and then i couldn't snap out of it and just oh. keep crying for so long <laughs> <laughs> i was in class and like i found out this one scene like the, the father I'm speaking to is actually a ghost. And I just didn't understand that when I read it. And when I learned it, I could not stop crying. Like, it was embarrassing, Tyler. It, it was like, I'm sorry, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> but the teacher said, say juju beans. So have a code word to snap yourself out of it. So I was like, juju beans, instantly stop. It's something that's real, real wacky, you know, like Whoa. real random. Yeah. yeah. But but it's important to have that understanding but yes absolutely it's very cathartic it's and writing it has been so such a release you know and it doesn't and i write it and it doesn't have to be me i'm writing about it's someone else yeah. so then i almost don't feel alone anymore you know it's oh, like wow. oh this jane in my scene and i know what that feels like even though jane is me you know in some way but it's 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 i don't know i've you just don't feel so lonely anymore, even though it sounds crazy now that I say it out loud. It's like, it, look, it just Jane not. and I are friends. <laughs> <laughs> I no. have multi-personality. <laughs> <laughs> Am I speaking to Regina or Jane right now? <laughs> I know, I know. There's many more. <laughs> no, I, I, every screenwriter also will completely agree with that. There, there are moments where really? you connect with characters. You, you project so much of yourself onto different characters. I mean, I've, I've had to put a script away and uh, not finish it for another year because I was just so wow. like, just sort of guilt stricken by it. And I, mm. I could not go back to it. So I had to write a bunch of comedies 
and then love that. Right to that and you, you feel better so there's there's always a connection there it seems like between the the self and the performance or the self and and characters in a script so uh, I mean I want to see what else you write I want to you know I want to read your first feature script or your first tv oh my god and see what happens even- I don't know. It's okay. No. First of all, how does anyone connect the dots? Like I read a short scene and I'm confused of where I started. Writing. <laughs> I, and I'm thinking of like, you know, it made, it gave me a whole new appreciation for features or shows. Like how do they do the twists and turns and make it all make sense? Like continuity and relationships. It's what you do is fascinating. Like I'm so inspired and impressed by your ability to write full length things. Cause I'm I'm just always confused. <laughs> I'm kind of janky. Remember I told you I was janky. Kind of janky. Kind of, I'm kind a, of a janky, janky personality. Writer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Describe yourself. I'm janky. I'm very motivated. <laughs> a little crazy, multi personality. But no, it's it's yeah, it's it's really great. I've I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. I'd say like one cool thing you could do, and if it doesn't work out, you know recycle the dry erase board but dry buy dry buy a dry erase board and then create sort of a roadmap of where you want to go in the scene in the story and then okay. uh, leave little spaces because then you can go in and fill in oh this would be really cool to put here this would be cool to put mm. here it's mm. uh yeah it, it's essentially just a, a giant form of prep work instead of just your character it's going to be yeah all these characters but it's yeah. a lot of fun it's it almost you feel you start to feel like a uh, russell crowe and a uh, beautiful mind after uh-huh, a while uh-huh. or you go oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so That's weird so I'll I'll have to try that because I think if I see it visually it'll help yeah yeah right right now it's just floating in my crazy mind so it's, <laughs> you know with I all the have... wars and everything oh my god Jedi <laughs> mind tricks I wish I could do it on myself like figure it out <laughs> well I speaking of of Star Wars Given that you are a Star Wars fan, have you been able to audition for any of the newer projects? Has anything come your way? So um, I am new with a, an LA manager out, out of that market because, you know, I'm based in Atlanta. Yeah. So not yet, but I know that it's a really hard franchise to even be seen for, from what I understand. So no, but hopefully soon in the future, because that would probably be the dream for me to end up somewhere and not as like a one-off you know a villager or something I want to be (laughs) I want to be a part of that universe because it's I live it every day in my head in my backyard whacking around my collie stick that I pretend is a lightsaber (laughs) my dog like it's just I that that would be the dream I hope I hope one day but I'm also realistic I just got to stay on the grind and, and keep my imagination because that's what keep, that is what keeps all of us going right yeah. as artists yeah you're, that little hope <laughs> you're realistically optimistic about it yes yeah no I totally get well I mean given your your current track record and now being a part of stranger things I feel like mm-hmm. that gives you just a huge boost of exposure for your career your career itself I mean it's was the LA manager something that stemmed from being in stranger things or from other projects you've been in or like, yes, absolutely. Oh, um, awesome. Yeah, when the Deadline article came out last year, that was like my chance to be seen by someone in another market. Yeah. And of course, in the business, like it's all, it's a lot of art and your craft, but the business side is also very real and having to stay on top of connecting with people, talking with others, learning who's a good fit or not, you know, and it's hard. I feel like I know nothing. And the truth is, I do know nothing. And you can't just Google this stuff. That's the annoying part. There's no how-to book. And if there were, don't read it. If, if someone tells you there's only one way to do something, they are wrong. They're full of shit, guys. They are so, <laughs> oh, they are so full of shit. But, you know, it's, it's meeting people and talking to everyone. That's how you learn how to navigate through your own career. And I am lucky and very fortunate that a deadline article came out announcing my role, which by the way, took me by surprise. I did not know that was going to come out that big and like their announcement of the four, four, four of the recurring actors. Yeah. Um, and I got a lot of buzz from it that I was not prepared for, but it's been 
a beautiful thing. Like it's really, I feel really honored that, you know, I, I was a huge fan of the show prior to even auditioning for it. So I love my sci-fi stuff, you know? <laughs> like just nerding out on that. And it's a great show. And then getting the chance to read for it. Cause I think they were pretty picky in like, I don't see a lot of people read for the show. They're like selective with their actors. So I feel what is it that like they what is that saying opportunity is like luck needs hard work I can't remember something it's something along yeah. those lines but like, like I can't say yeah. it's all luck but you know I feel fortunate that my hard work you know and my agents like they're amazing and they got me the audition the cast director that believes in me and wants to share my work with the producers stuff brothers and to get an audition for it, which which I knew I was a counselor, but not much more. I didn't know who I was going to have my scene with. Like, and it kind of sucks sometimes when you don't have detail. <laughs> but in a way, that just means you just got to be yourself. Because yeah. what else are you going to do? You know? Yeah. You can't pretend to be something when you have no idea what that something is supposed to be. So why not just be yourself? Be my janky self. <laughs> <laughs> be your janky self. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, that seems like such a huge opportunity, like you said, and I'm wondering some, some of these jobs, I mean, I, I've done one or two co-stars where it was like three days later, I heard back, Hey, you got it. Or like a month later, Hey, they want to take you back in. (laughs) How quick of a process was this? I mean, you obviously read for you auditioned for it. Was it something (laughs) one, you also forgot with the goldfish brain, or is it something that you just kept? Oh yeah. Um, I try to like, I remembered it the next day and then I goldfish it because <laughs> it hurts too much when you are too yeah. close to it and you like it. And I've done that stupidly a few times and I'm sure I'll do it for the rest of my career, but I have to remember goldfish it. Right. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I did it and I played her more, Miss Kelly, more like kind and compassionate. Mm-hmm. And then the casting director came back and was like, hey, let's see her more kind of quirky and relatable, which is me, me, you know, janky me. So I showed them my janky self. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got, I think it was on a Tuesday and then on by that Friday, I heard back. Um, I was in the car driving to a friend's house. It was late at night and it was raining. And my agent calls me and says, you booked it. And I forgot how to drive, Tyler. It was not (laughs) safe. It was not safe. I got off the road because I had to remember how to breathe because I just was so excited. And I didn't know what this role was going to be or how big or small it was. I was just so excited to be in a sci-fi show and um, one that I actually watched and liked. Like I, I, it, it, it still feels surreal. And now that it's out and everyone gets to see my crazy hair and, and how somewhat sketchy <laughs> I have appeared to be. <laughs> oh, all those fan theories are oh my blowing God. up the internet right now. <laughs> Every day I get like, did you see this? Yes, I have. You know, you're on BuzzFeed. Yep. Yep. Did, didn't know until you showed. <laughs> it's crazy. I, I feel it's like, sometimes I look at my picture, you know, from those scenes and I'm like, I don't see myself I just see the character and it's like oh look at this person you can't trust her <laughs> <laughs> she's up to something or is she, she? Uh, I don't, I don't know. know if you do you feel that way when you watch back your audition tapes or anything like or are you able to turn off the oh I'm watching myself and then just watch it as the character like watch the character watch you as your character and not worry about you yeah funny. I think it depends on the script honestly like for some because uh, i i've had essentially like two lines in a feature film and then a couple co-stars here and there love it and some yep. video game stuff and it's been great but a lot of the auditions for co-stars it's just the you know like hey or my most recent one oh is God. like somebody passing out flyers and saying like one or two words I'm like all right cool i'll do two takes of this but there was one um i was pinned for a show last year and i i've talked about it a handful of times on on this podcast for a series regular role and the character felt like me I loved it and I you know when, when you're pinned it feels great it's like oh cool um I can get my hopes up but you know it'd be cool to, to figure it out but that was the first time in 10 years of doing this where I looked at it and went that is a character I don't see me at all you know I just I, I do not yeah. recognize myself 
Uh, ultimately, yeah. did didn't go there, but it was just That's cool okay. to have that experience. You know, to what a huge win, it. right? To get pinned for a series. Oh my, you're on your yeah. way, dude. It yeah. felt amazing oh. to like not only have that uh, disassociation from myself in in the screen, but also having the casting department see that as well, which I'm sure yeah. is something they also saw with your with your audition tape for you know the counselor role for Miss Kelly it's just mm -hmm. I don't know and you definitely like talking to you now that is a character you know that is <laughs> it's there's little parts of you there but that is right. definitely a character outside of the really awesome 80s hair <laughs> oh my gosh right oh thanks for saying that I really appreciate it because oh, yeah. it is like you know you 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 can choose to you know, uh, turn up some things and turn down certain things about yourself when you play different roles. Yeah. And I definitely turned down my, you know, jankiness. <laughs> Your razzle dazzle. <laughs> my razzle dazzle. <laughs> um, but you know, the 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 caring, the compassion is still there. You can see it. And now that you've met me, and I'm talking about kickboxing all the time, it's it's all there. That's all very real. You know, yeah. I I care so much, and I just want people to fight through life and not give up it's hard it's an everyday struggle like to oh, yeah. get up and go do things first of all for some people to get up is like the hardest thing <laughs> to do for me that's not I'm so excited to get a new day so like I I get up at 5 a.m every day I bounce out of bed and I'm like today is the day and I'm like what can I do who can I help <laughs> like what can I change you know, like I'm just like ready to go but also by like noon i'm done i was like, about to say yeah how long does that last <laughs> i'm like the tasmanian devil like, ah! <laughs> like when dogs they get real hyper because they need to go potty or they yeah. have to go sleep and then they do it and it, it like and then they hit a point where they're like crazy and then it's like you oh just pass God. out i'm just That's gonna kind lay of right me. here <laughs> yes that is me i'll be sitting on the show i'm like i'm just gonna lean back over hold on hold on <laughs> <laughs> like but it's hard and, and you know and I really believe mindset is a big thing and again that's a discipline it's an everyday active thought to think positively for yourself and for others yeah you draw in you draw in the right people I think when you have a certain mindset but if you're always in a dark place and there's nothing wrong with that you may not draw in the people that help elevate you from that it might keep you there and that's not good you know yeah I think well it's especially to... in this job <laughs> yes that's huge are you kidding oh my god <laughs> yes you, you, you can't this it's a you know acting is a career it's a lifelong career it's not a you can't look at it as next week next month it's for the rest of your life which is kind of beautiful because you grow and experience life so you're acting what you give changes as you continue to audition that's such a yeah. fast like no other job is like that yeah it's, it's so crazy there's like ten thousand glass ceilings in the acting industry where you oh just my God. Keep... yeah like yeah uh, how i've been thinking about this a lot lately how mm. uh i mean based on like stranger things all of them started when they were they were just kiddos you know and they're growing into their their early 20s mm -hmm. do you feel like your career has been uh for the better because you you went into it as an adult or do you think there would have been some chance if you started younger you would have experienced the same sort of like stranger things mentality i, I, I just, there's always such a weird thing with like child stardom or being a, a child actor i've been really thinking about it a lot because i wanted to be in harry potter films when i was younger like i would have oh, to be in one of those yeah uh, but it's just it's just an interesting thought you know like is it better to start later with more life experience or you know starting your training younger and then seeing how that kind of builds like millie bobby brown is obviously incredible uh right. and seems decades beyond her years but she also started you know probably when she was six or seven so young yeah i don't know that's a good question and i i i I don't have a good answer for it because I think it's all different and what yeah. they bring in is different. And when you're a child star, that also, that's, it's so like, I commend them for being able to bring so much when they haven't had that much life experience. Uh, but at the same time, their life experience will never be the same as a normal kid where, and those are, there's some gems to that too. Like having real life 
normal life experiences to bring into the table. So I think it's just different. And I think it depends on the project. Like, and the person. Like, I got to work with Sadie, and she's so young. But she's, like, she's very down to earth. She's talented, and she's very authentic, and she's not afraid to be. Um, And she kind of just, like, she's just happy-go-lucky. She doesn't know where this is going to go. She's just like, I'm just doing it. I'm just here to have fun and and act and, you know, dive in. She's just open-minded. But, I mean look at them and they, you know, they haven't had that much regular life experience and they're able to bring a lot to the table. It's just different, but that's yeah. a very good question. And I gave you a very janky answer, but I love the janky <laughs> answer. It was, it was a janky proposition of a question. It's like, I, you know yeah, what? I'm going to well, pull this out and see where we go. <laughs> I, hey, I don't care. I'll talk about anything. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, before I get to sort of the, the last few questions I have, yeah. Given that you're a huge sci-fi fan, and we've sort of talked about Star Wars. What is your favorite piece of like sci-fi media? Is it Star Wars? Is it something else? I mean, it doesn't have to be something you'd want to act in, but what's your, like if you're having a really rainy day and you got home from work, it's just been kind of a weird day. You want to watch something. What are you going to put on? In sci-fi world, Doctor yeah. Who. Oh. Like yeah. classic Doctor Who, newer Doctor Who. Um, so like starting with Chris Eccleston. Um, oh yeah, yeah, with Rose Tyler. Uh, I forgot her Billy. What's her name? Uh, whatever. Like I love all Doctor Who things. My oh wait, last time I said this, and the lady said I shouldn't say it. I named my internet name something from Doctor Who. <laughs> I said oh, no. it out loud, and she was like, "We're gonna have to cut that so people will take your internet." <laughs> I'm telling you, I just run my mouth. I, I'm an open book. I'm so honest. But I just love the idea of time traveling in a blue box. And I have a little, in my backpack, I have a little sonic screwdriver that I whip around sometimes. I'm such a dork. It's oh so bad. Oh my God. It's beautiful. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's so awesome. But, but yeah, it's like, uh, you know, they, they meet aliens and monsters and creatures. And then um, the doctor always finds that these weird things are just also creatures and humans like they just have feelings and thoughts and sometimes they are misunderstood which is why they lash out it like helps me understand like villains sometimes are just sad you know and I, I, obviously we know that but watching that show for me helped me see that a lot and to find good and evil to see if you can draw that out instead of just labeling everything just because your judgment your your in I shouldn't say your instinct it's like the what you're taught you know it's like good or bad but it's not always black and white it's very gray so I, I just I really like that show I've watched from starting from Chris Eccleston and onward now to I can't wait for the new season to come out um uh but I've seen it like three or four times it's a lot but I also love like oh my god you're a Star Wars fan right oh yeah Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I loved Rebels. See, did you see I, the animation? Which I have, oh, oh my god, which Rebels version of it? Aren't there two? There's a 3D animation, oh, the there's animation. Like, there's a there's one that's Bad Batch, I think that's coming out. I, that's uh spun off of wait, that's spun off of Clone Wars or Rebels. Oh my god, I'm getting, I'm getting so I think up. it may have so, spun off of Rebels. Yeah, because I I've seen okay, so I have seen Rebels. It's oh my god, what was it? There's another animated one that came out that I have not seen. I remember watching bad like the batch. 2D. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it was a bad batch. I haven't yeah. seen yet. I've, yeah. I just started it. Um, I also just finished Obi Wan. You know. Yeah. Have Thoughts? you seen it yet? Oh yeah. Oh, it was good, but it's weird because you already know how like things are gonna play out because of the movies. So, so I'm like, it's weird because I don't want to <laughs> know the ending, but. Like, I know nothing's going to happen to Leia. She grows up. Yeah. So she's going to be fine. But I guess that's more, I don't know. And then they ended with him <laughs> introduced. Like, when, when Kenobi goes up to Luke. Oh, uh, oh, oh, I don't want to. Okay, okay. I, sorry. I'm having a lot of thoughts in my head. I need to stop spoiling it. I'm so, I, no. I was with a group of friends and I spoiled the spoiled Mandalorian because I'm an idiot. And I was oh. just sharing because I was too excited. And someone was like, oh, okay, I'm trying not to spoil it right now. <laughs> Listeners, someone spoilers. Was like, that spoilers. I know. Uh, someone was like, that happened? I'm just going to use generic words. And I was like, 
And then one of my friends was like, oh my God, are you kidding me? That's like the <laughs> biggest spoiler. How could you have just blurted that out? And I'm like, yeah, like I can't control, I can't control it. Wait, it's did so you spoil good. the season two finale? No. Oh, wait, yes. I did not. Yes, you totally. No, <laughs> no I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> Tyler, can you edit that out? <laughs> I'm just kidding. She didn't spoil it, anybody. She did not spoil the thing that happened in season two of Mandalorian. Gonna hear, all, oh, shh, all they're going to hear is me going, uh, 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 uh. okay, this girl's got problems. <laughs> yeah, I think we've all done it. Because as a massive fan, you think everybody's been watching it with you. And if you like, haven't, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say I judge people for it, but it's like, hey, man, it's been three weeks since the first episode if you haven't watched it yet you're not gonna watch it for a while it's gonna be okay yeah yeah <laughs> and if, if people haven't seen it i'm like oh then let me tell you like the the basics about it to get you interested and then oh, yeah. i just start rambling for way too long <laughs> and then you know when people give you the look of like okay you, you can calm down now and then you're Bring like down okay. <laughs> yeah you will become a sci-fi nerd you will be my nerd friend. Like, I just need, I just need, you will learn to love Star Wars and Doctor Who. I also love The Expanse. Have you seen The Expanse? I haven't watched that. No, my, my so friend Brian Garner's interviewed a lot of those those cast members and apparently it's great. I haven't seen, so is it like a, it's more like Battlestar, right? Like that it's kind of space. Feel? Yeah, it's yeah. like space sci-fi, but the first season is a little slower because it develops, it focuses on developing the stories, but oh, man. Okay. It is so good. And then I found out when I finally found the show, they had all already finished filming like the whole they were done with the series. And I was oh, so no. sad because I was like, I'll never have a chance. <laughs> so, they need to do a spin-off. You never know. You know they how might. It is. I know. Now I'm getting sad. <laughs> so, so many things. Okay, fine. You're right. See, you're 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 taking a page out of my book. <laughs> well, you can do it. Get back up. Keep See? fighting. That's how I felt about one of my favorite shows ever is Party Down. And it lasted oh. two seasons. And then when they started talking about the reunion limited series, I'm like, oh, this is my chance. Never got an audition for it. That's all right. Uh, but the fact that it's coming back gives me hope. <laughs> so yes. something. It was it was good. Like yeah. I don't know why it stopped. I think it was ahead of I its don't... time. Oh. <laughs> that, that that's very wise of you that that's true because sometimes people people ain't ready no nope. people ain't ready that's my defense for a lot um yeah, i'm gonna <laughs> use that i like that a lot <laughs> ahead of its time uh i i don't want to take too much more of your time because we're already like running way past but i'm gonna ask You're my good. final selection of questions for you okay uh one of my favorites being uh, we like to talk about party stories here. So it doesn't have to be something that took place at a party, but it's a story that you would share at a party. It could be something that uh, was like so impactful in your life that you've just clung on to that experience. Do you have something like that in your arsenal you could share with the listeners? It could be is like- it, Is it? First booking or some maybe people you've met while you've been working, uh, just uh, kickboxing stories, just anything that you have that you've experienced oh, you said parting i thought you said party oh party yeah party sorry like, i i'm just like getting over party? covid so my voice is no bonkers no it's not you but are you saying like a lesson <laughs> from a party like Wait. uh there's it's so hard trying to like explain this uh, no i'm sorry I'm no 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 that. it's it happens every episode i'm like how can i how can i really remix this question but um a party story basically being something that you would tell to your friends at a party. So say you're all oh. like swapping stories, something that that was really crazy or impactful to your life and, that you could share with And not what happened them. at a party. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to tell you a funny story that happened I mean, to me at a party. A, a, a party but, story is also welcomed, but I have to give it the full spectrum for storytelling. I, oh God. Uh, yeah, I was going to tell you that one time I accidentally took a drug. Ooh. Is that allowed? I mean, yeah, I, by, actually, no, it won't be, um, I interviewed two, uh, two big stars of the adult film industry and their party stories. I have to say, like, 
hey guys explicit just letting you know if oh no this. no, no. I, um, this is more like so yeah drugs are like so low on the totem pole right now as far as like what we've talked oh about God. on this show so <laughs> it's open to wow. anything names for no, of course okay 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 <laughs> Now I have to tell the drug story, but I have a different story. I'll, I'm also going to tell the drug story was more that I'm not a big party person. I didn't, I don't, um, I'm just not cool. Like I can't, I don't know how to party. That's what I'm a just, cool I, person like, would say. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. That's so funny. But, um, I was with some friends one time at this, like, I guess it's a club. I don't go out often enough, clearly. And I was having a major headache. And then their friend gave me an orange peel, pill and and he was like, here's some Tylenol. I was like, thank you so much. Like, I just trust people so naively. And it turned out it was ecstasy, I think. I think. Okay, I didn't know. Okay, first of all, the moral of the story is don't take pills from random people you don't know, which I should. Like, I would be that kid that someone's like, here's candy, come to my van, right? I would be that kid <laughs> who follows the person. So actually... With that story being said, I was fine, guys. Like, nothing happened. I was with my girlfriends, and okay, good. I didn't find out till later, and I felt horrible. XC is horrible. Like, in the moment, mm -hmm. the lights look really cool and neon, but the next day, you feel like, oh, utter crap. It's just not good. It was. I was dehydrated, and I think it, like, releases all the serotonin, I think. Mm -hmm. the, is it serotonin? You know, and the endorphins, like, whatever, the mm -hmm. happy feeling. So then when you wake up, all you have is your sad feeling. Yeah. So I just woke oh, up no. really sad and, and like, I felt like I got hit by a truck. Anyway, that's, <laughs> don't take, don't take medicine. If, even if they say it's Tylenol, don't trust them. <laughs> I should know better. I'm a, I'm a late bloomer. I was very sheltered growing up. It's bad. Um, okay. So <laughs> segue into this story, this party story, my first commercial gig. Um, so, you know, as I told you, uh, I was scouted to do some modeling in Texas and I was like, I need to break into the industry. I'm always the person who just looks for work everywhere. I don't care if you say no to me, I will find somebody else. Like I, to me, I don't know anything about it. So it's like an endless pit. Like I just, mm. you know, I got to keep going. Yeah. Uh, no's don't discourage me. They just tell me, okay, I can cross that out next. Okay. So, so. Do you know Model Mayhem? That's like a, it's a site where people, they, it's like the modeling MySpace back in the day. Oh and so you're going to go, okay. I'm so writing it down. Model, it's like Craigslist for models. So I signed up <laughs> and I did a profile, you know, and all that good stuff. And I was submitting myself to everything. And then this guy uh, messages me and says, hey, I'm shooting a commercial for a phone company in Alaska. And I think you would be a great spokesperson, a spokesmodel for it. Because Alaskan, there's a lot of Inuits, mixed age, ethnicity, you know, because I would kind of fall into that. And he goes, um, if you're up for it, I was like, oh my God, totally. Thank you so much for picking me. And then he's like, you just have to come to my garage. Uh, the studio is in the garage and you can bring a chaperone, but I'm really trustworthy. Like, I'm a like we can talk some more if you want, but don't feel obligated to bring someone. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, Oh my God, he's so nice. He told me he was trustworthy. So of course he is. So I go by myself and I'm a spokes, a spokesperson for an Alaskan phone company. Like nothing bad happened. The story ended up worse. Like me and the photographer are still friends. We just keep in touch now because we you know we've grown. I know this what? story should have ended with me murdered and chopped up into pieces in the backyard. Like it didn't. Um, his, <laughs> his, his garage studio was great. Like it was as good as he could make of it in because he had just moved. I can't remember from where, but he was, you know, before he had time to build his own studio, he just made uh made it work in his garage. And there was like like AC, it was all very professional. Like he he was a nerd too, so we bonded over a little oh geeky God. things. Yeah. So uh, but listeners, please don't do what I did. Like most <laughs> of the time that story does not end up well. But it's crazy. Like we've been friends and he used me. I I have to thank him because he was my my first experience at a commercial, you know, doing a commercial work and featuring just me. And I did like four or five spots for him. And eventually he moved up in his company and started doing spots for Dell and IBM and he would include me in all those things. Yeah, we worked together for many, many years. Yeah. 
crazy, but, but it sounds horrible to start like that. Like come to my garage, trust me. Yeah. Like it's, it's so bad. But for me, I, I got really lucky that he wasn't, you know, a serial killer and, and that I'm still here today. I'm not locked up in his dungeon. It's t- <laughs> <laughs> Blink twice. <laughs> Blink twice, that was it. <laughs> we were thinking the same. But, um, but yeah, so that's, that's what I will end with because it's such a crazy story. Yeah. Oh my God. That is not yeah. what I expected to happen. That's... I know, because you looked really worried for me. You were like, okay, yeah. maybe this, we should edit this out. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to go dark. You're like, okay, yeah. this might not be great. We're unlocking some no. press memories. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, yeah, come to my garage. I'm trustworthy. Yes, yes. Okay, if you have I'm... a thin mustache, that's just another red flag. <laughs> like, there's... I just, I'm just so trusting, and I throw, I just give my heart out, and it's yeah. good and bad, but... I'm a goldfish though, so I'll just forget stuff. <laughs> this is uh, after if I listen back to this, I'm gonna be like, "Wow, she really needs to talk to somebody." And this I is sponsored by BetterHelp.com. <laughs> hey, I'm a, I am a huge believer in therapy. Yes. I've been doing it on and off. It's therapeutic, and it's so good for acting. I think the better you know yourself, the stronger of an actor you're gonna be. It's just. I- absolutely agree yeah yep 100 <laughs> percent. i'm still flabbergasted from the story i know you looked i wish they could see your face because you were so worried like you're yeah i trust me i've been a part of those casting calls like freshly 18 going this is how you you find jobs right and then you walk yeah. into some derelict office building with a blacked out office door like this doesn't seem okay i'm gonna i'm gonna no uh, <laughs> I know. Good. Good that your instinct is going to leave and not, okay, I'll just fight through it. Yeah. Like I've seen know. every horror movie scenario. This could not end well for anybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this, this next question really goes well with what we just talked about. Uh, yeah. But asking if you have any advice for our listeners. So it could be somebody who is brand new to the industry, is trying to navigate how to do all this after a pandemic, or it could be somebody who has been doing it for a while and is just trying to find a way to not give up. Uh, do you have any advice that you could pass on to listeners that maybe you've uh, held on to? Yes, I think it is important to talk to people in the industry. Um, I think oftentimes we feel like we're bothering someone, especially if they booked more work or they're at a higher level. But you'd be surprised how, first of all, little people reach out to others. Like don't, people don't just don't do that. They're scared, they're nervous and whatnot. And secondly, there are so many people, myself included, that have learned so much that we want to share the tips and tricks so that you can maybe skip some of those hardships. Not that you should skip all of it, because I think going through it helps you learn, but there's definitely some things that you shouldn't waste your time on, you know? Um, But yeah, connecting with people, reaching out, finding a mentor, that is huge. I could not could not recommend that more and your mentors are going to change and they're going to be right for some maybe the business side of your acting but not your actual craft so don't get hung up on one person um but yeah that's i that that has been the hugest because you know everyone does this you know you're in training you're in class you're in the craft but i think the connecting with people has become rarer especially in the you know now in the days of all self-tapes and just that lack of personal touch. Don't be afraid to shoot a message. And the most an important thing to add to that is if someone doesn't want to respond to you, says no, no thanks, or is rude, don't be deterred. Like I said earlier, no is a blessing for you. Cross them off your list, move on to the next. There are so many people, so many sources, so many opportunities out there. You just got to go find it. Don't let a no stop you. Like it, I just, it, you know, you, and if you, oh my God, I have so many, so much advice. I'm like, and, and, and. Keep it going, you know, keep it going. <laughs> I know it's, it's the mentors. Don't give up on the nose and have a good community. Um, okay, 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 number four. Okay, I'll stop at this one. <laughs> have, have a life outside of acting. Like, look at me, kickboxing, fitness. I have a day job. I paint. Um, I like, do do something else because the more real life experience you get the stronger of an actor you'll be 
you know, it's, it's just do go on that trip, you know, go break up with that person. Don't worry. <laughs> like go, go do all the things. Like don't just every day sit and wait. It's not yeah. worth it. And it, it doesn't pay off. It's, you gotta, you gotta be a human being and it, and it will all unfold. But yes, first and foremost, find a mentor. Don't be afraid to ask. Don't be afraid. Like, I was so happy you reached out to talk to me. Cause like, I think just this conversation alone, I, well, first of all, I, I'm obsessed with you. And secondly, <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it's just so nice to, now we know each other, we're connected, yeah. but you never know how that'll come back full circle in the future. Maybe not ever, but that door is open. It's always there. You know, yeah. it's a, yeah. And if, if I had said no, or if you said, nah, never mind, Regina's too janky, like you'll find somebody else. <laughs> I'll find somebody else. And don't, you know, don't get hung up. Just yeah. keep, keep, keep moving forward. Today is the day. <laughs> Punch your way through. Come take my class. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> don't, act, don't actually don't actually punch <laughs> I, I heard on the podcast i had to punch through it and i, I, I know through it. nothing regina takes chat is encouraging by... <laughs> no no that was a uh, figurative not literal <laughs> that's your next deadline article <laughs> i know oh my god delete delete <laughs> no i i agree with that wholeheartedly i mean i started this podcast during COVID to see how my friends were doing in this industry. And we're all, you know, moderately successful. We've done stuff. And we're just trying to see where we're going to go and where it's grown from there. The people I've spoken to, the people I never thought I'd hear from, you know, I just, it, I started developing a sixth sense about people where I'd see them on screen and go, I'd love to talk to that person and get to know them. Now I'm buddies with so many people I never would have been buddies yeah. with or met. See? If you, yeah, if you don't take those chances, it's not going to happen. And it's not even acting related. You know, I'm not doing this to try and develop a networking to get more no. jobs or auditions. It's, I genuinely want to just like talk to people and yeah. hear their story. And I would never would have thought that this interview would be as much fun as it was because oh it's so goofy. You know, it's just, it's not. We're both janky. Okay, We're, Tyler. We're janky. Janky as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> we are so janky. It's ridiculous. But no, I, I completely agree. And, and with that, uh, you know, with this episode, I like to ask people if they like to, you know, promote anything with their, their interview, whether it's, you know, projects or charities that you really care about, or really great organizations that you care about. Is there anything I could promote with this episode too? Uh, yeah, there's, um, there's a, an organization called Year up i enunciated that because i first heard it as europe like e u r o p e <laughs> but it's year up y e a r uh space u p and i might butcher this but in short they they you know people donate money towards this organization and it's a, a school that i think the teachers volunteer i'm not sure but uh under developed areas like those kids up to age 24 can apply to go to the school and you know go through a fast track learning of programming project management coding data analysis all that and it's a rigorous course it's challenging and they're very selective but when you get through the year and a half you're offered an internship guaranteed from big companies like Verizon AT&T to get your foot in the door and build your career when maybe previously their family couldn't afford college or really anything, right? Because Or you never thought you had the chance to learn something more because maybe you didn't have the confidence or the right people to tell you, hey, you can learn anything you want. You just got to work for it, you know? Like you just got to go try. But I met one of my best friends, and she's a lot younger than me, but she just thought she'd be a waitress for the rest of her life. Nothing wrong with that, but she wanted to try to learn more things. She's like, I don't have money for school, you know, all this other stuff. And then she found this program through Craigslist. So another, another like, story where it's like, their, their marketing has gotten a lot better now. But when it first started, I mean, they just post wherever they can. Yeah. And because of this, she learned to... She, she learned how to code and program in a year and a half. She worked her butt off and she got an internship with a small company, which eventually led to a much bigger one. And her salary doubled 
and she has a 401, she's young, she's like 25, she's got a 401k, um, health insurance, like everything. And I just, I just love this organization because it, it gives people hope. And I'm so, as you can tell, I'm so big on people finding chances and opportunities to better themselves. And I just, you know, I donate to year up, year up every year, <laughs> not Europe, not Europe. Europe. <laughs> Europe, I know year up. And I hope more and more people find them and they reach to reach, you know, the masses because it's a beautiful opportunity for people who don't have the the privilege of having someone guide them you know through the generic route like one that I went like you go to high school and you go to college like you I always knew that but not everyone has someone to be like you can do this like you should go to college or you should go learn some some new trade you know so yeah I want to promote that so it's not about me but it's about like this this organization oh that's so cool and they're here in Atlanta oh are they okay cool that's good to know because there's been um a lot of organizations that I've never heard of at all that people are giving shout outs and promos to. And I'm more looking into it, the more I'm like, this is, this is amazing. Uh, But yeah, year, I have to, I have to enunciate it too. Year up. up. Oh my God. That is so cool. Okay. Definitely putting that in the shout outs. I'm I'm so proud of her. Like she, you know, I'm going to start crying thinking about how proud I am. (laughs) Oh my God. I'm sorry. She's just, she's just, you know, you, 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 you get a chance and you go after, and that's what I stand for too. So, oh my God, I'm sorry. Oh No, 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 no. no. She's come, she's come so far and I'm so excited. And I, I hope that her story also in her class of friends also, they all got internships somewhere and they all get to get this chance of building a life and knowing that they're capable, like how beautiful that is when they otherwise didn't have any of it growing up. Oh my sorry. God. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I don't know. No, don't Juju, be sorry. Juju beans. Juju beans. Juju beans. Juju beans. <laughs> Juju beans. Janky Juju beans. <laughs> so yeah. Yep. <laughs> sorry about that. Oh no, God. don't, don't be sorry at all. No, that's, that is incredible. And I can't wait to, I want to look into that as well. Cause I have a lot of friends who were based in Atlanta you know, and Mm, it'd be nice to kind of like keep that spreading and let people know like this organization exists. So that's, that's beautiful. Um, Juju beans. I, I, (laughs) (laughs) this, that's okay. Cause this final part of the recording is really fun. Uh, Preliminary question. Have you ever seen Wayne's world? Mm -mm, I have not. What? I know. I know. I grew up with Chinese soap operas though. So like, I didn't see a lot of like, classic movies i just know a bunch of chinese yeah. stuff this is comparable to a chinese soap opera but like okay, tell not. me tell me uh <laughs> it's so uh well first firstly i do want to say like before we stop the recording and, and do this like thank you so much for your for your time and sitting down and chatting with me on this beautifully oh, yeah. very humid wednesday uh well i can't say anything you're in atlanta uh yeah <laughs> but... it's very bad here you better zip it <laughs> <laughs> no it's just it's been so much fun talking with you and i want to have you back on the show of course you know i'm gonna tag you in a bunch of stuff while we uh while we promote this episode because this is actually coming out this friday for the oh, release yay! of stranger things volume two it just kind of happened oh yeah um yay! so even better uh but yeah. i just want to say like thank you it's been so nice meeting you and and getting to know you and uh, I hope we can continue this this buddy buddy janky relationship because this has just been Same. intensely fun. <laughs> uh, I know I've gone through all the emotions today in an hour. <laughs> may, I should go through and just like screenshot each emotion and just like all my send faces. it to you. <laughs> yeah. No, um, thank you. You're you're a blast. I mean, I, I I really enjoyed this. Thank you so much for having me. Oh yeah, I'm just I'm just a dork in a in a gamer chair and I don't play video games. Uh, <laughs> that's hilarious oh yeah don't it's don't okay. tell anybody oh wait from uh, one geek to another we know our people like we instantly oh, connect. Yeah. yeah oh yeah i knew the second you're like sci-fi nerd like, yep uh, we're gonna be yep. going just fine yep. uh yep. but i'm getting off track uh so wayne's world it's a very small moment in the uh, in the film do you know what it's about generally i mean it's mm-hmm. two guys that do a public access show in one of their mom's basements yep. uh but their <laughs> their uh camera guy there's a silent uh, countdown. So it's countdown three, two, one. Then when he points there, it's just a very awkward scene. So I love this as our awkward goodbye. So I'm going to do a silent countdown. One, two, three. 
point to you, be as awkward as you can, say your goodbye, and then I'll stop the recording. Think you can do that? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> you should have it's, done it already. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Okay. Here. But do I well, hit? Do I hit leave? No, no, no. Because no. I, I, oh, I have okay. to, I have to close everything out before. <laughs> okay. Okay. That sounded so weird. No, don't leave. My garage is trustworthy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so nervous. Okay, just do it. Just do oh, it. You got. You got. Ready? Right? And. Yeah.